In a previous uh, screencast, we reviewed adding and subtracting fractions. Uh, this time, this, we're going to be multiplying and dividing fractions and uh, mixed numbers as well. So let's review this uh, concept. Very important. It prepare ourselves for uh, algebra we'll do later uh, in, uh, in high school math. Okay, the first important note is unlike adding and subtracting fractions, we do not need big, big uh, accent, accent on the not, not need a common denominator while multiplying or dividing fractions. I often see students that are trying to get a common denominator before they, before they multiply or divide fractions. Not necessary, a lot of extra work for nothing. So let's uh, forget about that when it comes to multiplying and dividing. That's what makes multiplying and dividing a little bit nicer than adding and subtracting. We don't have to worry about a common denominator. So multiplying fractions. When multiplying, we first try and reduce the fractions by canceling out or dividing common factors into the numerators and denominators. A lot of students seem to not pick this up in earlier grades. So uh, just to make, if I multiply this first question here, A, 6 times 5 and get 30, and the bottom numbers, 15 times 9 and get 135, I have to, to reduce this now, divide by uh, by num whatever I can to try and reduce that to lowest terms. It, it can be what a challenge sometimes, especially when you get larger and larger numerators and denominators. Uh, what we're going to do here, I'm going to basically review, so I'm just going to uh, uh, erase this thing, and review uh, something else, another method of doing this. What we'd like to do here is reduce it before we multiply. So divide any numerator and any denominator with a common factor. So what number will divide both into a top one of those top numbers into one of those bottom numbers evenly? Well, one of the obvious ones is 5. 5 goes into 5 one time. 5 goes into 15 three times. I can reduce that. It doesn't matter if the denominator is on top or not on top of the denominator. Any number on top with any number on the bottom. Okay, what about the, the other numbers here? Well, 6 and 9. What divides into 6 and 9 evenly? I can, I, I think that uh, what uh, 3 goes into both those numbers. So 3 goes into 6 twice. 3 goes into 9 three times. Now, does 2 divide into 3? No, it doesn't. So it looks like we can't reduce it any further. So I'm just going to now multiply. Okay, so just multiply the two top numbers together. Two numerators and get 2 times 1 is 2. And now multiply the bottom 2 and get 3 times 3 is 9. And that's reduced already. I don't have to worry about reducing. The, or my answer is already reduced. That's the answer, 2 ninths. The next one here in B, if I multiply these numerators out, I'm going to get a huge number. Huge number. It's going to be in the thousands. The same thing with the bottom. It's even going to be larger than the top, probably. So let's just reduce first and see what happens. What number in top divides bottom? Well, 4. 4 goes into 4 once, and 4 goes into 12 three times. That's a nice smooth move right there. And let's choose another one. Let's just say 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 10 twice. Mm -hmm. And keep moving along here. Uh, 3 goes into 6. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 6 twice. Um, how about uh, 18 and 8? I think we can do 18 and 8. What about uh, 2? 2 goes into 18 9 times. 2 goes into 8 4 times. And uh, what else can we reduce here? Well, the 2's. Let's reduce those two 2's. So there's a 2 here. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 2 once. And what else do we have here? 3, three, go, three goes to 9. 3 goes to 9. So let's also do that one. And uh, 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 9 three times. Multiply the tops together now. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 times 3 is going to be 3. And the bottoms, 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1 times 4 is 4. My answer is 3 quarters. If I multiply that out and got these huge numbers in the thousands in the top and bottom, I pro many times students will not reduce those to three quarters in the end. They won't go far enough. So there it is. It looks a little messy, but it's so uh, efficient and convenient to do that way.
let's um, look at one more. Okay, so let's do the next one. Uh, first of all, I noticed that there's a negative sign in here. How many negative signs are there? Well, there's only one negative sign. So, I'm gonna, so the answer is going to be negative because that's one is an odd number. So it's going to be it's going to be a negative answer. So put negative there right now, and uh, let's just see what happens. Well, any numbers divide top and bottom here. Let's see. Well, two into four. Okay, two goes into two once. Two goes into four twice. I've taken care of the negative already, so I have to worry about that. Uh, let's try another one. Let's do three into three goes once. Three into six goes twice. And uh, what else? Well, we have also uh, two. So two goes into two once. Two goes into two once. Looks like we're pretty much done. Multiply the tops together. Five times one times one is five. And uh, one times seven times one is just seven on the bottom. So there's our answer, negative five sevens. Okay, let's uh, move on to mixed numbers here. There's a couple of examples. I'm only going to do one of them. Uh, both examples work exactly the same. Uh, let's do the first one. So change this to an improper fraction. If we do these questions, we cannot multiply the whole numbers together and then the fractions together and ex get, expect to get the right answer. You have to change these to improper fractions. So 3 times 1 is 3 plus 2 is 5 over 3 times. Next one, 5 times 2 is 10 plus 2 more is 12 over 3. Sorry, over 5. Let's just correct that. Make sure we write this down correctly. Okay, so that's over 5. Now we can try and reduce. Once we've done that, now we can do the reducing. Um, okay, so while fives are look pretty obvious right now, we got fives, two fives, so five and a five goes once, five and a five goes once. And three and twelve, yes, three does go into twelve. Three goes into three once, three goes into twelve four times. Multiply the tops, multiply the bottoms, I get four over one, which is just equal to the whole number four. So there we have it. And uh, both are positive, so it's a positive answer. The next question, the answer will be negative, and we will just skip that one for sake of time and move on. I want to talk about dividing fractions. And so here's the four steps for dividing fractions. Number one, change any mixed numbers to improper fractions. Number two, invert the fraction, which follows the division sign, in other words, comes after the division sign, and change the divide sign to a multiply sign. Okay. Step number three, reduce the numerators and denominators. Okay, reducing comes then. Step three, and finally in step four, you multiply the numbers remaining in the numerators together, multiply the numbers in the denominators together, get your final answer. Should be already reduced, if you reduce properly in the, in the, within the question. So let's just go down here, and we'll try two or three questions. I'm not going to do all of these, but first one. Well, the fraction, there's two fractions. And one's a proper fraction, one's improper. That's okay. Uh, so it's set up for us. So the first fraction stays the same, 3 tenths. Now I can't divide. I have to change that to multiply. Change to multiply. And then when I do that, I invert or flip the second fraction. The fraction comes after the divide sign. And that becomes 5 twelfths. Okay. After I do that flipping, then I reduce. I don't reduce before, but I reduce after I flip. Okay, so let's just take a look at this here. Uh, 3 goes into 3 once, into 12, 4 times. Uh, what else? We got uh, 5, it goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 10 twice. And now I can't do 2 and 4 because they're both on the bottom. And so I, can, I only do if it's in top, one number's in the top, one number's in the bottom. So let's just multiply 1 times 1 to get 1 on the top. 2 times 4 is 8 on the bottom. There it is, 1 eighth is my final answer of that question. Okay, move on to B. Uh, this one is uh, two improper fractions, uh, sorry, mixed numbers, sorry. Change them to improper fractions. Uh, and so let's do that. I get 9 times 2 is 18 plus, uh, no, not negative 18, the negative is in front. 
Uh, 18 plus 4 is 22, so we got 22 over 9 divided by, that's a negative, divided by 3 times 6 is, is 18 plus 1 is 19. So I get 19 over 3. Okay, so um, now I need to take and I need to take and flip. The first one stays the same. Make a change to a multiply, flip the second one, 3 over 19. There we go. Now, does anything divide top and bottom here? Hmm, 22. Well, 11 times 2 is 22, and 11 doesn't go into 9 or 19, and neither does 2. So let's move on to the 3 here. What divides into the 3? Well, 3 divides 3 once and into 9 three times. And that looks like all the reducing I can do. Oh, well, we reduce as much as we can. And that's it. So I've got negative times the positive is going to be a negative. Put the negative right in front. 22 times 1 is 22. And 3 times 19 is 57. And that should be reduced to lowest terms already. So we'll just put a border around that. And that's our final answer. And so we've reduced as much as we can. Uh, C is a similar kind of question. It reduces quite nicely, actually. It's a negative times a negative it gives me up. Oops, what happened there? Let's move this up again. Negative times a negative is a positive, but I'm going to leave that question for you to try. I'm going to move on to the last one, D. And the, so the first step is change any mixed numbers to improper fractions. Let's do that. There's a there's a mixed number right there in the middle. So everything stays the same. Four fifths times. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 is 5, 5 over 3, divided by 2 ninths. Now, I'm not quite ready to this question because I have a divide sign. So I have to take and get rid of the divide. How do I do that? We'll change it to a multiply. So let's write down the first part. Don't be afraid to take and put it on an extra step or two. It'll save you making mistakes in the long run. So change that to a multiply now. When we do that, we have to flip the fraction that comes after it. So that becomes 9 over 2. There we go. Okay, so let's see if we can... We've done that. We've done the uh, first couple of steps. Now let's reduce. So reducing here, well, 5 goes into 5 once, and the 5 once, that's that's nice. Uh, how about what else can we got here? Well, we've got uh, 2 and 4. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 4 two times. That was nice as well. And lastly, we've got the... Th I think we can do 3. 3 goes into 3 once, and into 9 three times look for common factors and that's as much as I can do there's just ones in the bottom so let's just do the bottom one times one times one is one two times one is two two times three is six and so this answer is that all numbers are positive so it's gonna be just six over one which is just six there's our final answer of six and that is the review of multiplying and dividing fractions and mixed numbers.